Okay, so today I have something uh, exciting to share. I've been working on our backyard farm, putting it together, and with the main star of the show being black soldier flies, or BSF larvae, that we can use for um, animal feeds, um, for high protein, fats, and minerals, um, to help reduce the feed costs that we have to get from the store. So what I'd like to share with you is, I finally was able to set out my attractant and put out um, the eggies that are required. I, I was able to collect the eggs. So from that, I was able to turn those into larvae and we're at a stage now, I think uh, like seven or eight days in, where you can actually see the larvae moving around. So this is really exciting and i like to show you. So this one I think is maybe six days. What I used for the media was just um, chicken feed. I bought a few kilos because um, my first time doing it, I don't want to. I don't want to mess anything up. So uh, I decided just to go ahead and foolproof. Just get some um, some chicken feeds. I don't even know what what they layer. I'm not sure exactly what it was what we bought, but some starter. So probably high in protein, which is good. It's quality, really easy, foolproof. I'm sure. Um, it's not something that we'll want to do. We'll actually want to collect wastes. Um, to make it, you know, profitable. But, okay, so here we are. If we come in closer, I'm gonna try to move some of this substrate back. So that is the larvae of the black soldier fly. They will turn into pre-pupae and then the pupae stage and where we can um, use them for feeds as well as take about 1% of the population from my understanding to start over again and create more uh, flies and have them in a love cage and breeding. Um, so something I've been wanting to do for a really long time and we're actually making it, uh, making it happen now. So uh, yeah, so let me show you the, the, the next one we have. Come on in, come on in, check it out. Okay, you ready? Same, and this one here, we have the same. We have uh, the feeds from the store, um, as well as on top of here, I have a, a rotting overripe papaya that was comes from one of our trees. So. Uh, you probably can't hear it on camera, but if you're standing here and you can hear them making little sucking, kissing noises, sounds like, uh, or you know, maybe it sounds like raindrops, kind of. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's what I want to show you. Um, but before we go, a little bonus, I'll show you the the chicken feeder and water system. This is uh, the water tank we just completed. This tank is just for the farm, our 250 square area. Um, this will supply the, the chickens and the pigs or any water source as well as the sink. So the pipe will run, will run all the way down the end of the, to the corner and then cut across to the other side. And that's where our chicken feeding watering area is. We're under a tarp today because uh, it's been raining and the guys want to keep working. Mark, it day. Okay. So we have here uh, these orange things, uh, or these PVC pipes. We've converted them into chicken feeders. Uh, so I'll show you here. We, we have the the uh, um, sanitary T and a cap, end cap. What we did was we unscrewed this piece here and we took this piece off and we filled them with cement. Oh, do we don't have any more? Oh, they're all done? Okay, so in here, as you can see, we filled them with cement. Uh, 
Mark, can you take this off? Is it possible or is it permanently on there? Okay. It's okay. Siggy, Siggy. It's okay. Yeah, Salama. So, um, what we did was we put cement in here because um, if not, the feed would come all the way down to the very bottom and the chickens would never get to it. The feed will always come down, but they'll never be able to get to it. And if any kind of moisture or over time, I'm sure down here will start to go bad and then it, it'll affect the rest of it. So what we did, was we put the cement in, uh, inside these cap, which brings it up to about here. So there's only that much feed difference. So they can actually get their head in there and, and, uh, and peck. So these are uh, up here, I think they're almost five feet total, but the pipes are four feet. Um, and there's, how many out of 12, I think we have. So in the dry season, we'll be able to turn some of them out. Turn it around the other way and keep it. Uh, this allows our grain to be mold or anything, reduce the amount of mold and reduce the amount of work um, feeding, right? When you imagine a commercial chicken house, right? The workers are walking in there with their feed and they're walking with birds all around them and there's chicken shit and everything in the way. Uh, and that brings in diseases. So by bringing the feeding on the outside um, and filling these once, maybe once a week, that reduces our work as well as, um, you know, we can easily man open the lid and look and see how much feed they're eating. At night when they go inside, we will put caps on the end of these so that the rodents don't um, eat it at night. And then in the morning we'll take the cap off. So when, when they go into roost at night, we will clean this area, we'll wash it down. I actually have water here. I don't know if I can. Guys, I got a little water coming down. So I'll show you how the, the, the liquid comes at an angle this way and it flows all the way down. So once a day, we'll be able to come and clean this really well so that the next morning when they come back out, it's already, um, it's already clean and ready for them. So there's, and then when they come out, we can go into the cage and clean up from what they have from the night before. And the reason we're putting in so much work make and doing it every day is because uh, I'll be able to collect their manure and feed a portion of it back to the black soldier flies and the waterers. So these are our little water cups. And that tank over there comes down to the corner here, turns and comes to this corner here, and then we'll fill up this tank. This tank is separate from that tank because of, occasionally I may need to put add minerals or vitamins or something, some kind of supplements to it. And then I, um, I wouldn't want to add the supplements to the, to the main tank. So I, I put it here so that I can remove it and I can just pull this out, this hose out. Let the water drain and then we can clean it and then start over again. And we'll probably do that once a week. Um, now this is in the sun temporarily, about two hours a day. Um, I'm predicting that the wh white is going to let the sun come through and it's going to have algae and bacteria growing on it. So um, I need to think of a method. Do I paint it? Do I wrap it in plastic? Do I, can I build a box over it? Uh, if you have any ideas, please let me know below because I, I could really could use uh, some, <laughs> some, some more wis some wisdom on how to keep uh, from algae growing. But anyway, any other way, we're still going to clean it once a week um, just to make sure, be preventative. So down here is the water cups. Just water cups you can buy on Amazon or we buy them on Shopee, which is like an Amazon here. You just twist and pull. And then once a week, we can clean these out as well. Little cups out. And what, how these work is, there's a fill of water, as it fills with water, this valve will come up and then it'll stop the water from flowing. And when they drink it, this will start to come down, which will allow more water to come in. So it should always keep a, it should keep a consistent level. Um, I don't know, I haven't used these before. We're gonna find out. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And, uh, oh wait, we just turned on water, finally. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so good timing. We have water. 
water the giver of life. So, okay, thank you for coming and checking out the video and I look forward to showing you more in the future. Have a good day.